the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, HICA, Accounting Technician Scheme, ATS2, Information Technology, IT. This material is prepared based on the new ETS syllabus. Introduction to computer. A computer is an electronic machine or device that accepts data, stores data, manipulates data, and generates output, information, or results. So a computer is a programmable machine that receives input, stores, and manipulates data and provides output in a useful format or useful form. So a computer system is made up of theory of physical and abstract components put together constitutes a computer system. So the physical component is known as a hardware, while the abstract component is known as the software. So in this case, it means if you have the hardware, we need to install software before the hardware can be useful. So, and that is why we say that the, a computer system comprises of two uh, major constraint parts, that is the hardware and the software. So, and at the same time, this computer we are talking about is a programmable machine. It means that when we have the hardware, without program installed at the hardware, there is no way the hardware will be useful. So, which means that it is the software that we are going to install on the hardware that will be able to direct the operation of the hard of the hardware. So, in that in such a situation, it means we have gotten a complete uh, computer system. Now, this computer we are now talking about, it has some characteristics or features. One, it has high speed of operation, that it is works very, very fast, that it is very fast in operation. Normally, the speed of the, the speed of the processor will actually determine the uh, rate at which the system will be processing data. And uh, the speed of that processor is always measured in hertz. So we can have we can have megahertz, we can have gigahertz, but the speed at which the system will be processing data is what we call. I mean, the, it's always measured in uh, hertz. Then it performs arithmetical and logical operation. That is, can perform calculation of input data through what you call ALU, arithmetic logic uh, unit. Then computer is very accurate. Very accurate in the sense that it produces uh, accurate uh, results. It produces uh, accurate results. Then a computer is very reliable, reliability. It also has large memory facility or capacity. The memory capacity is the, the memory of the system will, be not, will not be used to, stu, to do what to, to store data. That is for data storage. Now, if you now look at the speed of the processor, as I mentioned earlier on, that is measured in the hertz. The memory capacity of the system is always measured, measured in the byte, and that's why we can have kilobytes, we can have kilobytes, we can have megabytes, then we can have gigab gigabytes. Byte must end it because that is the unit for measuring the memory capacity of a computer system. Then its operation is automatic. And also, in terms of uh, the, the computer system is very versatile. That is very, very uh, flexible and can be used to you know, uh, so many operations. Then, diligence. A computer can continually work for hours without creating any error. In that case, they, that, that is the reason why any office or any operation whereby we decide to use computer, it will actually reduce the rate of error. It will reduce the rate of, the rate of error. Then it is consistent in, in, its motor, in its mode of operation without accuracy being affected. Then it is user friendly, that is very easy to use and operate, and at the same time, it is a programmable machine or device that it cannot work without a without program. So in the exam, it has been tested in the past that students will just be asked to define the term computer. The question just define the term computer, one mark, maybe one mark, maybe one and a half marks or two marks maximum. And at the same time, we'll be asked to mention the features of computer, and that is why we have been able to do or to look at the definition, the uh, features of computer 
especially under this uh, introduction. Computer network and internet connectivity. A computer network is defined as the interconnection of two or more computer systems with data communication devices in order to share resources such as hardware and software. So computer network simply refer to interconnection interconnection of two or more devices or computer systems two or more devices or computer systems with the aim of sharing resources computer systems with the aim with the aim of sharing resources and communicate effectively and communicate effectively so when we interconnect two or more computer systems we can easily share resources the resources to be shared are hardware and software for example if we interconnect 20 computers now for example we don't the online will be thinking that when we interconnect 20 computers that we must have 20 printers no when we interconnect 20 computers even more than that we only need only one printer so what is going to happen now is that on the network we are going to install printer on one of the computers on the network most uh, most importantly it's always very advisable to install a printer on uh, the network server why because when we install the printer on the computer on the on one of the computers in the network so anytime we are working on the network even if if all the computers connected together are busy that is if people are using all the computers it means only one printer can easily be used effectively by all by the user in order to print so which what is going to happen now is that each user when it is time for them to print they will send their job to the printer and uh, the printer will accept it and print it the only condition now is that the printer where we are, the computer where we are going to install the printer on that computer must be on all the time because if that computer is not is not on by the time we switch on by the time you send the data into the computer that if I to be printed onto that computer so it will just give us information that printer not found then that is the reason why it is always advisable to install the printer on the printer on the network server because there's no way we can work on the network without the network server on and uh, for the fact that printer for the fact that network server will be on 24 uh, i mean all anytime we want to use our network it means the print uh, the printer uh, the network server will now begin to serve two two functions that is it will now it will be working as network server and also print server so that is why most of the most of the print server, most of the printers on the network they are always installed on the network uh, server but the most important thing is that the net network computer network is the interconnection of two or more computer systems in order to communicate or in order to share resources the resources to be shared are a hardware and a software now from the definition we said that computer network is the interconnection of two or more computer systems in order to share resources now there is something called network topology Network topology refers to how the computers in the network are physically connected. That is, network topology is the physical arrangement of computers on the network. The, the physical arrangement, physical arrangement of computers on the network, the computers in a network is what you call network topology why because when we interconnect our computers together there must be a way of arranging our computers on the network and uh, normally uh, te or technically there are five types of net network topology we have star topology we have star topology so we have ring topology then we have mesh topology then we have bus topology and also we have a tree topology the another one we can have to hit is what you call hybrid topology the one thing with hybrid topology is that it's just topology that comprises of two or more uh, 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 
topologies. That is, when you have combination of star and ring or star and mesh, once we can enjoy or we can connect two or more topologies together, that type of topology will now be called hybrid topology. But technically, there are five types of topology the star topology, the ring topology, mesh topology, bus topology, and tree topology. So, the next thing we are going to do now is to begin to take them one by one and now begin to look at their definitions, their uh, diagrams, advantages, and uh, disadvantage. Star topology. A star topology is a topology that has a central server or host to which all workstations is connected. When we say workstations, workstations can as well be called terminals or nodes. So, now a central server or computer communicate with various terminals and other computers used over point-to-point -point lines. So the computers on the network are directly connected to the server. We can as well say that computer, I mean, star topology is a topology whereby the server will be at the center, the server will be at the center, and the computers connected to the, the computers on the network will be connected directly to the server. So the, in order to not have the diagram, we can as well look at, we can just look at the definition of this topology and now draw our diagram from it. Because anytime this area is tested, the, the, anytime this area is tested, diagram will be required. Even sometimes the question will say, explain and support your answer with appropriate diagram. And that is why here diagram is very, very important. So there will be a central server or central host. Central server or host. Then, this central server it will be regarded as network server that should be controlling the computers connected to, to it in order to establish the network. But the condition now is that each computer on the network will be connected directly to the server. The computers on the network will be connected directly to the server. So the server will not be at what? The, the server will not be at the center. So that is what you call star topology. That is a topology whereby the server will be at the center and the computers connected to the server, uh, the computers on the network will be connected directly to the server. Now, this star topology, it has some advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages is that there will be better performance. That is, star topology prevents the passing of data packet through an executive number of nodes. That is, if I'm using a computer, for example, if I'm using this computer now, it means I will be interacting directly with the server. And whatever information I'm sending will not pass through other computers before it gets to the central host or server because my system will be connected directly to the server. So in that case, there will be what you call better performance. Then benefit from centralization. Centralization allows the inspection of travel through the network. These facilities, or these facilities, sorry, this, fac this facilitates analysis of the traffic and, de and detection of suspicious, suspicious uh, behavior in the sense that once we have the central server, the central server has the ability to control the terminals connected to it, no matter the number of terminals. Although sometimes the number of terminals that will be on, the, on that network will also depend on the capacity of the server. But for the fact that each computer on the network will be connected directly to the server, the server will now, it will be very easy for the server to effectively monitor and control the activities of all the, uh, the terminals connected to it. They're easy to, inst to install or set up. That is, start topology is very easy to set up. And right now is that easy to detect fault or remove uh, any parts, that is any, any devices on that network. What you are saying here is that it is very easy to troubleshoot. It is very easy. It is very easy to troubleshoot. That is what you mean by troubleshooting is that when your system is having a problem and then you are trying to locate the problem by checking the devices then in order to be able to locate the problem and what and, and rectify the problem. What happened is that what you, the user is doing in that, in that case is that he's trying to troubleshoot. He's trying to locate error with the aim of fixing the error. So it's very easy to troubleshoot. Take for instance, if we have a, a, a network like this, for example, we have a network like this, where we have the central, we have the central server. This, this is the network server. If I'm using this computer and I'm, I'm, I'm complaining, but others are not complaining, it will be very clear 
to everybody that the computer I'm using is the one having a problem, not the entire network. So in that case, the only thing I need to do is just to abandon this system and go and use another uh, free system. <music>